Okay, so let's talk about something absolutely massive. There's a new proposed proof for the Riemann hypothesis, which is, you know, one of the most legendarily difficult problems in all of math. But the craziest part? The claim is that they've solved it not with numbers, but with geometry. To really get this, we have to start with a question that has bugged mathematicians for centuries. When you look at the prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and on and on, they seem to pop up without any discernible pattern. It just looks like chaos. But is that really what's going on? Or could it be that what looks like chaos is actually something else entirely? A deep, hidden structure. A secret rhythm that if we could just figure out how to listen would explain everything about the primes. And that's the quest we're on. To find that rhythm, we've got to understand the map that supposedly leads to it. And that map is the Riemann hypothesis. It's all about the fundamental building blocks of numbers themselves, the primes. So this hypothesis, which has been around for over 160 years, it makes this really specific, kind of wild claim about something called the Riemann zeta function. It basically predicts that all the function's most important solutions, what they call its non-trivial zeros, they don't just appear randomly. Nope. They all fall perfectly onto a single straight line. So why on earth should we care? Because those zeros, they're not just points on a graph. They're the key. If you know exactly where every single one of those zeros is, you get this almost magical power to predict the pattern of the primes. It's not just a treasure map. It's the treasure map to the very heart of math. For a century and a half, the most brilliant minds in mathematics have thrown themselves at this problem, and every single one has failed. It stayed this profound, untouchable mystery. But now, this new approach, it claims to have flipped the entire problem on its head. And this is where you see this huge shift in thinking. See, the old way was to start with a zeta function and just hunt for its zeros. This new approach does the complete opposite. It sets out to build a geometric structure from the ground up, a structure that, by its very nature, creates the zeros in exactly the right spots. You know, it's the difference between finding clues at a crime scene and building the machine that committed the crime. And this new way of thinking has a name, the entropy spiral. It's a total reimagining of the problem. It actually borrows ideas from physics and information theory to define these three geometric forces that it claims are behind the whole thing. First, we have to kind of rewire our brains about a word we think we know, entropy. In this theory, it's not about randomness. It's better to think of it like tension in a system. It's a kind of symbolic energy that's measuring how much a structure wants to settle into perfect stable symmetry versus how much it's resisting. Then you've got curvature. This one's a bit more intuitive. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a measure of how much a structure is bending away from being perfectly flat. It's almost like a memory of all the forces that have pushed and pulled it out of shape. And the final piece of this puzzle, the final force in this dynamic dance, is torsion. This is all about the twisting within the structure. You know, how one part of a curve wraps and coils around another. So what you have is this constant interplay of tension, bending, and twisting. Okay, so we have these three concepts. Entropy, curvature, and torsion. How in the world do they come together to actually find zeros of the zeta function? Well, this is where it gets really cool. Okay, so here's how it's supposed to work. Imagine a curve just traveling through this abstract information space. As it moves, it's being pulled in two different directions at once. Torsion is trying to twist it, and curvature is trying to bend it. Most of the time, they're fighting each other. But, and this is the key, the theory says that at very specific, absolutely perfect points, the twist and the bend come into perfect balance. They completely cancel each other out, creating this moment of pure stability. And they call that a collapse point. And here it is. This is the central claim of the entire proof. The non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function are these collapse points. They're not just abstract numbers you find with a calculator. They are actual, physical, geometric locations where the structure hits a state of perfect equilibrium. No twisting, no bending, just balance. This quote from one of the researchers just nails it. The point isn't that they just found the zeros. They're saying they have constructed the underlying machine that produces them. The zeros aren't a mystery anymore. They become an inevitable consequence of the geometry itself.
Now, for a theory this big, this bold, it can't just exist on its own, right? It has to connect with what we already know. And this is where things get really compelling. For decades, other mathematicians have had their own ideas, like the hilbert polya conjecture, which guessed the zeros might be like energy levels in a quantum system. What these researchers claim is that their entropy geometry doesn't just agree with these other ideas. It provides a single unified framework that explains all of them naturally. So, let's just step back for a second. If this geometric framework really does explain the primes, the implications are just staggering. This goes so far beyond just checking a box on an old math problem, it could be a whole new blueprint for understanding the structure of reality itself. I mean, think about it. At its core, this is a model for how stable, ordered points, the zeros, emerge from this dynamic mess of forces. Well, couldn't that same principle describe how stable particles emerge from chaotic quantum fields? or how you preserve information in a quantum computer. It gives us a new language to talk about a universal process, how order emerges from chaos. And maybe the most mind-blowing idea of all is this one, the Riemann zeta function, this thing that we thought was a fundamental pillar of math. It might not be fundamental at all. It could just be an emergent property, a shadow cast by a much deeper, more real geometry that's governed by entropy, curvature, and torsion which all leads to one final huge question. If the primes, the very atoms of mathematics, are really just the result of this geometric dance of tension and release, what else is? Could this be more than just a proof? Could it be our first real look at the source code of reality itself?